In the headlines, due diligence remains a top priority for managing funds under the CBI program. Improvements at Roseau Ferry Terminal expected to enhance visitor experience for this year's World Creole Music Festival. And the Council on Aging highlights the critical role played by public financial support in the execution of its programs. I am Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, the performance of the National Employment Program and government's stipend to the elderly relies on the income the Citizenship by Investment Program will generate this financial year. Last year, over 8 million from CBI funds was spent on the National Employment Program. Over $435,000 was also invested in the Apprenticeship Program. Tourism Minister Senator Robert Tong is also welcoming that revenue from the CBI program as it will continue to finance capital projects. Under the real estate option, the applicant, in addition to the fee for citizenship, invests a, sign a significant sum into the development of the said project with the hope of a return of investment. The amounts paid towards obtaining citizenship goes towards financing of government projects such as the National Employment Program, the Over 70 Support, and many other capital works, especially this year, such as the upgrade of many tourism sites. In the 2015-2016 financial year, the Citizenship by Investment Program funded tourism site enhancement projects to the tune of $139,000 and $258,000 for development of community tourism. Many have asked why create such an avenue of investment. The answer is simple. In our first for increased awareness of our beautiful country island of Dominica, this is an opportunity to increase much-needed high-quality rooms, increase employment in various areas, including management, improve standards as such developments must be of a minimum four-star rating, improve staff training, higher levels of customer service. It is also an opportunity to attract branded hotels such as the Hilton, the Marriott, and so many more, which will help improve the awareness of Dominica. I consider that free advertising. The Prime Minister has said that government's contribution to the capital budget will be financed with resources from the Citizenship by Investment Program. It generated over $200 million in revenue last financial year. Meantime, systems have been put in place to ensure funds to be withdrawn from an escrow account for the CBI program are used for their intended purpose. As part of what government calls a rigorous due diligence process, a developer qualifying for the real estate option of the CBI program is required to submit environmental studies, feasibility study with financial projections for five years, a profile on its shareholders, statement of character, and police record. Foreign Affairs Minister Senator Francine Barron told a signing ceremony for approved CBI projects that her government wants to ensure developments approved are viable. The developers have had to satisfy both the technical and ministerial committees appointed to review their application. And I am sure that sometimes the developers may have grown somewhat wary of the process. But all of the time spent in doing this has been spent to ensure that we approve viable projects that will benefit all of the citizens of Dominica. The developer can start sale of investments once the deal is inked with government and withdrawal of funds can be done in accordance with the escrow procedure. I think it's important to state here also that this government has put a process in place to ensure that all of the funds raised for each project is fully accounted for. All funds are placed into an escrow account a developer must apply to the government to withdraw any funds from the account and two signatories are required for any withdrawals from the account. One from the developer and one of the public officers of the Ministry of Finance, namely the financial secretary or the budget controller. A qualified professional is employed for each project answerable only to the government who must certify that any request for payment out of the fund is genuine and in keeping with the work done on the project. In other news, as the Dominica Council on Aging undertakes a series of activities to commemorate the Month of the Elderly, financial support for their cause still remains one of their primary concerns. 
the Dominica Council on Aging is the umbrella body that advocates for the well-being and rights of senior citizens in the country. First Vice President of the Council says the organization has several projects geared at benefiting the country's senior citizens and financial assistance from the public would be a great help. The money will go to a lot in advocacy, in employing our people, our senior citizens. We are having seminars. We are having, there is something we call um, board and affiliate meeting, and this, this is a costly uh, matters. Um, to the, the maintenance of the office, visitation to seniors and um, the groups, we have to visit the groups island wide, and this is very costly. We also assist them in getting the necessary uh, equipment, tools and equipment to ensure that they live a better life. The government of Dominica has been particularly helpful in ensuring that the Council on Aging is able to carry out the majority of their activities. We have so many activities to undergo. And uh, uh, as I told you, we, so this council is sustained financially by fundraising activities. Fortunately for us, to be frank, and I need to thank the government of Dominica for coming to our plight and concern, and uh, the, the government of this country um, is paying this, the, 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 the salary of two staff. The Council on Aging will be holding a dollar day on the 23rd of this month to raise some much-needed funds. The Dominica Council on Aging is a non-profit organization and the sustainability of this council depends on fundraising activities. Therefore, we have organized a school dollar day. Each student is expected to bring a dollar at the school. I would like members people of Dominica to turn out in large number to support the Dominica Council on Aging. We have so much to do. We have so much to do. And it's costly. And unless we are assisted in getting some funds from our, our uh, blessed donors, we are nowhere. The month of activity is officially opened with an address by the President of Dominica on the 1st of September. An expectation that owners of accommodation, properties and entertainment facilities in Portsmouth will access a $15 million loan facility to prepare their businesses for an influx of tourists to the area. Trade and Employment Minister Ian Douglas, who is also the MP for Portsmouth, says a Portsmouth development plan is guiding improvements in his constituency to coincide with construction of five-star luxury hotels. The Silver Beach Resort and Spa Dominica is the newest hotel project proposed for Portsmouth under the Citizenship by Investment Program, while the Cabrits Resort Kempinski project is underway. The government in the last budget, we just placed $15 million in the aid bank um, so that Persons with existing tourism properties like rooms and restaurants that need upgrading can go to the aid bank and access those funds to upgrade their products. So all of the tourism related amenities like restaurants, um, nightclubs um, and other, other rooms really in the area can be upgraded um, to really complement what is being built right now by the developers of Silver Beach and the developers of, of the Kapinski. Road improvement projects on Harbour Lane and Rodney Street totaling $1.6 million are part of the physical upgrades which are ongoing to add to the improvements on Bay Street and Lagon Road. We work on a vision, so we have a post-mob development plan that we have put together. We, we, even um, this election, this past election uh, in uh, 2014, um, what we did was a small manifesto on, on the vision where we want to see Portsmouth in the next 20 years. And so the development follows a particular phase. And so what we're doing right now is working on the infrastructure as we've been doing. We're actually preparing for the establishment of those uh, hotels. And there'll be five-star facilities. So we know that we have to have the amenities to go along with it. For example, you know, we spent millions, we spent about 8 million US um, to remove all of the shipwrecks 
that were on the, on the shore really creating an eyesore. All of that is in an effort to really make Portsmouth more amenable to the amount of tourists and the tourism that will come in as a result of, of, of those establishments um, now being built in the area. Coming up, enhancing the visitor experience at the ferry terminal in anticipation of this year's World Creole Music Festival. Welcome back. Akim Francis of the Kainago Territory has been granted bail but remains in custody until all his documents are in order for his bail release. Francis now joins the rest of his co-accused, Craig Christian, Elrado Ducre and Cynthia Dorset. They were all involved in the EC $1.8 million robbery at Jewelers International over a month ago. The others have been granted bail of $250,000 EC dollars. Magistrate Bernard Parkett granted bail to Francis despite objections from the prosecution. Their position was that he would abscond and that the stolen items were not yet recovered. But his lawyer, Tiani B. Hansen, said his client had spent enough time in custody under what he called inhumane conditions. As reconstruction continues with the Roseau Ferry Terminal, creative ways are being found to ensure the comfort of expected visitors for this year's World Creole Music Festival. Seating arrangements at the terminal could easily accommodate over 150 individuals. We're putting um, new seating arrangements for them, um, for that. So, and then the other thing that was done, which is important, is that we did not um, put in any air condition units or anything. It was natural flow of the air okay. um, based on the support of our engineers and architects. Uh, we were able to redesign the place so that we don't have to be using that. So again, the natural element was, was um, taken into consideration here. In the event of a storm, the taps can come off and the structure can stay, yeah. uh, which is again, creates some flexibility in terms of what we can do. Washrooms have also been added on the top floor to enhance visitor comfort. A recent tropical wave presented some challenges. And are there any challenges, especially with the um, recent weather conditions? Well, the recent weather conditions, weather conditions affect um, both marine as well as air. And we had a cancellation for the ferry because I guess one, one has to look that safety is paramount. Mm -hmm. and. No one wants to be to risk lives at sea or uh, in the air, and so all the safety precautions are taken. And yeah, when the, you have high seas and you have weather issues um, that may affect the, the proper or safe maneuvering of the vessels or even aircrafts, uh, they do not fly within that, that that particular area or they do not traverse uh, the seas. So we had a one day lost because of that. Um, hopefully, uh, as we go into the World Creole Music Festival season, mm -hmm. the, the hurricane season tapers down. Some of the changes also include separation of CARICOM passport holders from non-CARICOM passport holders to ensure faster transit through immigration. Then there is what is called the Green Lane, which accommodates individuals who need to declare goods upon their arrival. Here is what Badwell believes is one of the more important changes. Well, the main one is the tent structure that, that we have put in. Um, the, we, we're not complete, but I, I, I cannot say that we, want, we would have it in place for World Cruising Festival, because now that the tent structure that we put up, the first part, uh, there is consideration to continue that tent structure uh, both to the front as well as uh, further to the west. Uh, to create um, even increased cover for uh, the, the building and uh, for more passengers, for, for, for passengers to better utilize the space. More housing relief is expected for residents of the West Coast soon. The area of Platma Pier had been identified by government as suitable for housing to help in the resettlement of those who lost houses during Tropical Storm Erica. Chairman of the Housing Resettlement Committee told Channel 5 News that work on the six Petro Casas being constructed in this area is progressing smoothly. The government is undertaking the construction of six three-bedroom Petro Casas units, um, 
which are in a very advanced stage of construction right now as well. And it is our expectation within the next couple of within the next couple of months we would see the first phase of completion of the housing units in, in, in those areas. While six Petro Casas are being constructed in the first instance, there are plans to increase this number in the future. Before more houses are added to this piece of land though, phase two of the resettlement project in Platma Pier is expected to be completed. This phase, which comprises putting in the required infrastructure, is expected to get underway shortly. After that, um, very shortly, the provisions are made for the actual infrastructure work, the completion of the roads, the drainage, and works of that nature on the, on the houses. Plant Map here is also being used by the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, ADRA, to construct housing units for those in need. An organization which looks after the welfare of Dominica's children will be undergoing a rebranding process in order to extend its reach. That's according to coordinator of the East Dominica Children's Federation, Velma Moses Joseph. A name change is expected to help the federation operate beyond the expected geographical boundaries. The East Dominica Children's Federation will continue to work um, after child fund. What we've done to give us more scope, we, we're going to rebrand and our rebranding will be to um, Children and Youth Development Federation. We hope to do that soon. We don't want to be bonded by geography. We want to be able, what we do is good and we want to cover the entire country. We want everybody to benefit by what we have to offer. There were several projects started on the Child Fund Caribbean, which the Federation will continue as that institution works to create better environments for children. We will want to continue working with the um, Child Friendly School Initiative. We have a youth volunteers. Um, advocate program that we, we launched last year. We want to continue with giving young people the opportunities to volunteer in their communities, also to assist them in becoming employable and um, introduce them to youth in agriculture. We also want to work, continue supporting the RCP as much as possible, giving them whatever support we can. We provided social support to families uh, in our communities. That's something we would like to continue doing because come September we have we had a nutrition project and we can only stretch it that far come September. We would like to continue that, so that's something we would like to look for funding for and other opportunities for families who are marginalized in our communities. The East Dominica Children's Federation works with youth aged 0 to 24 years and with Child Fund having left Dominica, the Federation hopes to avoid a gap developing in child welfare projects in the country. The Federation wants to step in and conceal that void, but we need the assistance first to be able to do that. We already have the um, human resource, we just need financial support. Child Fund started a good work and we've partnered with them for a number of years and we want to continue doing what they have started to do. They just gave us a start, now we have to take the opportunity and run with it and do what we can for people in Dominica who are marginalized. That's news, your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. First up, Glenn Maxwell's 145 not out helped put Australia in the lead as the team went on to defeat Sri Lanka by a convincing 85 runs on Tuesday. Travis Head assisted with 45 and Osman Kawaja 36 to help Australia reach 263 for three. With an unlikely target of 264, the Sri Lankan batsmen produced mostly low totals with Dennis Chandamal reaching a 58. Mitchell Stark and Scott Boland each took three for 26. Australia leads the two-match series 1-0. Following a rain-affected weekend, the 2016 DBA playoffs continue this week, weather permitting. On Wednesday, it will be a clash of the forces when the Police Sports Club takes on Kelvadaro Hurricanes in an epic Game 1 final at Lindo Park. Tip-off is at 8 p.m. In football news, two matches are on this week in the Premier League of the Dominica Football Association. On Wednesday, Caribbean Cool Harlem United will take on Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers at Benjamins Park, while over at Dubla, it will be Exodus Football Club against Wacky Rollers. Both games are carded for 6 p.m. We continue with cricket, where the West Indies Cricket Board has announced its ODI and T20 squads ahead of their upcoming series against Pakistan in the United Arab Emirates. The Windies T20 side includes players like opening batsman Craig Brathwaite, 
who has played 31 tests but is yet to play an ODI or T20, all-rounder Rovman Powell and wicket keeper batsman Nicholas Poran. Chris Gale is not a part of the T20 squad, having made himself unavailable for selection, while Lendl Simmons has missed out due to medical reasons. The ODI squad also includes batsman Evan Lewis and fast bowler Alzari Joseph, who are uncapped in the format. Luis, who made his T20 international debut earlier this year, recently scored a 48-ball century against India in Florida, opening the batting in place of Chris Gale, while Joseph made his international debut in the home test series against the same opposition. Puran scored 217 runs in eight innings at a strike rate of 197.27 for Barbados Tridents, while completing eight dismissals behind the stumps. Puran's inclusion boosts West Indies' wicket-keeping options in the T20 squad, which include Andre Fletcher, Johnson Charles, and Chadwick Walton. Powell scored 228 runs at an average of 25.33 and taking two wickets with his medium pace in CPL 2016 for Jamaica Tallowers. West Indies will start their tour with three T20 internationals against Pakistan between September 23 and 27, followed by the three-match ODI series which starts from September 30. The three-test series, which includes a day-night match in Dubai, starts from October 13 and West Indies' squad for the format will be announced later. Meantime, the ODI squad reads Jason Holder captain, Sulman Ben, Carlos Brathwaite, Craig Brathwaite, Darren Bravo, Jonathan Carter, Johnson Charles, Shannon Gabriel, Alzari Joseph, Evan Lewis, Sonil Narine, Ashley Nurse, Kieran Pollard, Dennis Ramdin, and Marlon Samuels. Andre Fletcher and Jerome Taylor have been excluded. The T20 squad reads Carlos Brathwaite captain, Samuel Badri, Dwayne Bravo, Johnson Charles, Andre Fletcher, Jason Holder, Evan Lewis, Sonil Narine, Kieran Pollard, Nicholas Poran, Rovman Powell, Andre Fletcher, Marlon Samuels, Jerome Taylor, and Chadwick Walton. Back with more football, Grand Four Rockets and Commerce Park had four goals each as they won their respective matches in the quarterfinal of the Rivia Syriac League. In their last match, Rockets won four goals to one against RC Veterans. Wayne Phillip converted twice for Rockets with a goal each from Elroy Coffey and Moron Phillip. Radisson Pascal scored for Veterans. In another match, Commerce Park scored 4-2 against Ivor Stevenson Young Boys. A goal each came from Cheston Prosper, Dorian James, Dirk St. Jean, and Aldin Graham. Frankie Lawrence and Troy Pascal scored for Young Boys. Next up, a number of proposed changes to the cricketing sport are on the agenda for discussion ahead of the West Indies Cricket Board's meeting here on Friday and Saturday. The sport's place in the Summer Olympic Games, Test Cricket, played for four instead of five days, two-tier system for test play nations and women's cricket in the 2020 Commonwealth Games are just some of the topics to be discussed. The Professional Cricket League Regional 4-Day, the new format Super 50 and other development plans will be up for discussions as the organization gets ready for the new financial year beginning October 1. President of WICB Dave Cameron says the suggested changes in world cricket will affect how we move forward and we want to be ready for any adjustments made. He says we want want the changes to be in the best interest of cricket. On to more court sports, we can tell you that CT Kings and Portsmouth Breakers will be going head-to-head -head on Wednesday in Game 2 of the Division 2 Finals. The game is carded for 6.30 p.m. at Marigot. Finally, in the Soka Dominate 300 Domino League, Game 1, Martian 74 does 3 point, Galaba Boys 71 does 2 points, and TR Rebels 69 does 1 point. Game 2 execute 77 does 3 points, Riders 69 does 2 points, and Dolphins 60 does 1 point. Game 3, Tico Pawezo 69 does 3 points, Purple City 69 does 2 points, Tico Pawezo won over Purple City by 6s and hurt them 68 does 1 point. In game one of another match, Smart, 81 does three points, Volley, 79 does three points, and High Roller, 72 does one point. Game two, Demolish, 90 does three points, Rabbit Hole, 76 does two points, and Marboid, 007, 65 does one point. That's all the sporting highlights for now. Be sure to join us tomorrow. Coming up, your weather forecast.
Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. We begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery, and of interest here, this area of convection associated with a trough system expected to approach the area by tomorrow afternoon, and another area of convection associated with a westward moving tropical wave expected to be in the vicinity of the island chain by Thursday. Now, taking a look at earlier visible satellite imagery, what it showed. A few low-level clouds which moved across the area today and this resulted in fair to partly cloudy skies across Dominica. Now taking a look at earlier radar imagery and what it indicated. A few scattered showers across to the north and east of Dominica. Tonight's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers and tomorrow's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy at first becoming increasingly cloudy with scattered showers by afternoon. Sea conditions are expected to be slight to moderate in open water with waves peaking near 5 feet. Looking ahead to the next 3 days, beginning Wednesday, fair to partly cloudy skies at first, becoming increasingly cloudy with scattered showers by afternoon. These conditions are expected to continue into the early hours of Thursday. There is also the possibility of some isolated thunderstorms during the overnight period of Wednesday. However, by Thursday, as the day progresses, a relative improvement in conditions can be expected and continuing into Friday. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers expected across the central portion of the region with an increase in cloudiness and scattered showers expected across the northern and southern portion of the region with the possibility of some isolated thunderstorms expected across the extreme south. Our international cities forecast, some rain expected in New York, Showers and thunderstorm activity expected in Miami and Caracas. Partly cloudy skies expected in London, with clear skies expected in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 5.53 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.13 p.m. Please remember that we are in the hurricane season. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Due diligence remains a top priority for managing funds under the CBI program. Improvements at Roseau Ferry Terminal expected to enhance visitor experience for this year's World Creole Music Festival. And the Council on Aging highlights the critical role played by public financial support in the execution of its programs. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Lee. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us next time.